Welcome back. You've probably seen some of the TED videos online. They feature experts on just about every topic you can imagine. Well, the University of Texas at Arlington has taken the TED-like experience to a local level, to a college campus level. It's called TEDx UTA, and other campuses have them as well. I Ooh. think SMU has a TEDx program, mm -hmm. but we're lucky enough to have one of the speakers here with us, uh, who is a doctoral student, Jared Willis, and his expertise, not only for his PhD, but also for the TED Talk, is bullying. Yeah. Right? So, Jared, thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. Is that That's also great. a life experience you've encountered? Um, I've dealt with it before in my past. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So, yeah. tell us why do you think there is so much awareness now around bullying? This is such a big topic in the media and in culture everywhere. I think Phoebe Prince, Megan Meyer, some of the more like famous kids who committed suicide brought more attention to the topic a few years ago. And also now with social media and cell phones, you can be bullied anywhere that you are. Mm -hmm. Why are you carrying a bully around in your pocket basically all day? Mm -hmm. so. How did you deal with bullying? Um, I basically tried to succeed in different ways in my life and just further myself. So my master's degree was a huge part of that success. Mm -hmm. and I think that success is the best revenge in mm -hmm. a way. Right. It, is. Mm -hmm. it is. So what mm -hmm. led you, was your personal experience one of the things that led you to want to study bullying in your postgraduate studies? Well, for me, it was personal and also my friends as well, because I have a lot of friends who are lesbian and gay, and they experience a lot of bullying, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. um, and so my research was looking at LGBT relationships and also looking at bullying and like the kind of stimulus that they go through and what they experience in their daily lives. And mm -hmm. it leads to self-harm in some cases, doesn't it? Yes, and that's the focus of my TED Talk is self-harm. And so someone, for instance, kids who are adolescents, they're, they want to fit in at school. They want to be popular. They want to like get their identity set. Sure. And you also have peer victimization, which peaks in high school. Peer victimization. Mm. Peaks in, at the high school level. And also you have the highest onset of like depression and anxiety around, among that age group. And wow. so if you're bullied the most of that age, and there's more depression at that age, it's like a perfect storm. Sure, sure. So, uh -huh. so what is, tell us what the point, you, what will you be presenting at the TED Talk? What's the takeaway, if we're not able to hear you at the TED Talk, what will um, we hear? The takeaway would be essentially that there's an overlap in your brain between the processing of physical and social pain or emotional pain. An overlapping of your brain? In the brain region, the dorsal the and cerebrospinal cortex, the ACC. Oh, wow. If you say walk in a piece of glass in your bathroom or kitchen and like cut your foot, well, the same brain region is going to process if you're picked on at school. The same brain region really? sh shares that kind of pain. Mm. Danger. Um, or pain. Just, just pain in general. And so if, you're, if you reduce your physical pain, you also help reduce your emotional pain. And so one way you can do that is if you just literally cut your own wrist, like cut yourself, mm. then if once that pain goes away, it helps reduce your emotional pain as well. Is yeah. that, that why? Wow. Well, is there a specific advice that you give to those victims of bullying? Uh, you know, how to you, cope, what, maybe? Yeah, how do you cope with it? To try and make your your life and experience worthy of remembrance. Try to make your life a story worth telling is the best mm -hmm. advice I ever got. Um, to see beyond just right now mm -hmm. because there's so much more, you have so much more value. We all go through something in life and there's so mm -hmm. much more you can do in the world beyond your immediate pain and what people are putting you through. Mm -hmm. and what, what should we do, uh, those of us who are maybe parents or relatives of, of victims of bullying, it, what, what can we do to make it better for them? I think don't um, treat their emotional pain any differently than physical pain because like, yeah, if someone comes to you with say a bloody nose or a bloody lip, you'll say, oh, mm -hmm. my student got into a fight, who started the fight? You'll go and punish that student, you'll suspend them from school, right? But if someone has emotional blood in their heart, mm -hmm. you can't see their emotional blood like a bloody lip and so you might just wave it off. You can't be lenient against bullies who may be social in nature and spread rumors or gossip as opposed to those who get into fights because, yeah, sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can actually take someone's life. They commit suicide. But mm -hmm. sometimes the, the, the adolescent doesn't want you to go do anything because then they think they'll be treated worse. Or more of a stigma. Yeah. Especially for online bullying, too, because mm -hmm. if you're bullied online and your parents find out that you're bullied, they might take away your online privileges. Mm -hmm. So you might take you off Facebook or take away your cell phone. So in a way, you, don't, you won't tell anyone because you won't lose your cell phone. So what you might any, be yeah, punished I, for being the victim. Any, exactly. Yeah, are there any things to look for? for say a kid will not share the, the fact that he's being bullied with you. Are there any things that you can look signs. for? Signs. You know, behavior? I would definitely say being more reserved. There's a whole lot of internalizing problems that starts to develop. So more impulse control issues will start to show themselves. 
if they're like wearing certain armbands, it probably means they may be hurting themselves in some way. Mm -hmm. You'll see some kind of impulsive behaviors that arise and also depressive tendencies that arise when someone's going mm -hmm. through this kind wow. of experience. I, it's I, I've learned a lot from you today. Mm -hmm. I really mm -hmm. have. It's yeah. been one of the clearest definitions and explanations that I've mm -hmm. ever heard on it. Jared so Willis from job. UTA. And when yeah. is your TED Talk? It's going to be this Saturday at 3. It's $15 if you're a student on campus. Ah. It's going to be uh, 25 if you're a faculty and 35 for general public. So please come out and support us. How long so, is it? Yeah. It's about 3 to 6 or 3 to 7, somewhere. But how long is your talk? Mine's going to be just five or six minutes. So, I mean, Quick. if you're going to you, um, oh, yes. Uh, if you don't see me on Saturday, I'll definitely post it and share it. So okay, good. Can. Jared Willis yep. on bullying. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you, Jared. At UTA. Hey, audience. Very good. <laughs> news is tickets are still available yeah. for this Saturday's TEDx UTA event. Like uh, Jared said, it's at 3 p.m. at the Rosebud Theater at UT Arlington. Right. Up next on the Texas Daily, how losing sleep, did you ever lose sleep over anything? Uh, yes, uh, last night. Oh, really? Because you were so excited about coming in here. No, it's because well, I had to go to the bathroom. Okay, we'll explain that and how losing sleep can affect your brain cells coming up next. TMI. Yeah, too much. <laughs>